Hello everyone, um, in this video I would like to go over the um, basic usage of the new feature in PySolver 3.0 um, which can be used for um, modeling player profiles, uh, namely the incentives feature. Uh, so, so the way it works is we can build some small tree, we can uh, we can quickly solve it. So I chose a simple three bit pod fast tree uh, just because it computes in a few seconds uh, on my computer to a decent accuracy. And, and we can see that um, this tree um, in the root, for example, we have villain, we have the OOP player betting uh, 54% and checking uh, 45% and um, the call player calls approximately two thirds and if we do a call and we look at the average um, second barrel percentages we have 54% bet um, and now we can say okay but my opponents are actually um, so it's very interesting that it's exactly 54% on the flop and 54% on average on the turn. And let's say, okay, but my opponents are actually betting more. They're betting 65% um, on the flop and continuing on the turn also with like 65%. So we, we can try to um, model our opponents to, to, to bet this 65%. Uh, so the way to do it is to open the uh, incentives. So we not first have to navigate to the node where we want to change the change the, the strategies. So here it is root and the choice between bet and check. We go to um, three adjust incentives in current line. So I have created for myself a, a keyboard shortcut, control I um, for that. And we have this very, very crude window, uh, which is very simple uh, functionality. Namely, what we can do in here is we can set incentives for for the OOP player. And what it means is that during the solving, the solver will give an extra bonus, an incentive for a uh, for a player to do certain actions. So in here, we have a pot of 180 chips and we can try to give five chips bonus for the OOP player. So here we've got like five and set incentives. Okay, so now the incentives are set and we can rerun the solve, wait for it to compute and see what is the strategy. And, the, and it turns out that we have overshoot a little bit so with this, just with a five chips incentive, suddenly 80% of hands are, are a good bet. So we can reduce this number to three and, and start again. And we still have 70%. So let's reduce it to two. And now we have roughly desired 66%. Um, so looking at what we just did in here, I, I think the first reaction might be, oh, why can't I just provide a number, a 65%? <clears throat> and why won't the solver find the um, incentive number required on its own? And I think it's a very valid concern to have. And the reason we've decided against uh, implementing it directly in the solver is that um, sometimes it may turn out that you need, especially if you set some extreme frequencies like 100%, it may turn out that you need huge incentives to overcome it. So in some cases with very, very little loss in EV, you can have strategies which have considerably more 
percentages in certain actions. And in some other cases, even small change in percent is producing huge loss to the player. And in our quick experiences, um, it showed that the solver can produce very, very weird results and unexpected ones if you make these changes. Because usually when you're modeling a, a, a player, you can say, oh, they have different tendencies, but it does not mean that they are folding the nuts or, or making some crazy mistakes. And by adding a little incentive to a player, you can be sure that his strategy will still be relatively sound. So the mistakes he will be making are no larger than the small incentive amount that you give. However, it can be that if you set percentage, it may turn out that, oh, in order to achieve that percentage of bets in this particular spot, the opponent will basically need to make a mistake of a size of a full pot. And if you just blindly set this amount and then look at, at what's the exploit, you might be missing that you're actually trying to exploit completely stupid strategy. And <clears throat> with the incentives here, it's a bit more work for the user to find the right incentives if they want to have the exact percentage they, they're aiming at. But at least there is some kind of guarantee that the results we see are, um, that they actually make sense, that, that there is a sound strategy uh, for, for, for both players in the tree. Uh, so having said that, we did find the incentive number that leads to a desired percentage on the flop. And we can look farther what happened in the tree. So not so surprisingly, or maybe surprisingly, the, the actual strategy, the actual adjustment of the in-position player here it's not that big. There's basically 1% difference in a call. Okay, so we go farther, we call, and now we see how the turn strategies have changed, given that now we have a bit wider range uh, from the flop. So, and, and here it turns out, if I remember correctly, before we were betting 54% on the turn. Now the optimal strategy is to only bet 47% on average across across all runouts. So here we chose um, a deuce which pairs the board and on this board it's larger but if we um, if we change the runout to some other card we see that on some other runouts it's it's much slower slow, smaller like for example on our hard runouts it's a, it's a very small number and if we look at the hotness now on, on strategy, we see that yeah, on hearts we are betting particularly little on, on big cards and etc. Okay, but now our goal was to model a villain that after betting 65% on the turn, he also bets 65% on the river. Uh, sorry, after betting on the flop, now he bets also 65% on the river. Um, and here is where this incentive feature comes really, really handy. Um, because unlike regular node locking, we can easily set incentives in all lines on this particular, on, on all runouts for this particular line. So we have bad call turn, and now we can set incentives automatically in all, for all the turn cards. Um, so we will start also with setting some small incentives. So here we have a pot of 368 chips. And we can try to see what happens when we give some small incentive, like five, five chips at this point. So we can set, oh, and there's another important thing I forgot to do, is that after locking the turn, after creating incentives on the turn, we should lock the parents. And the reason is that if we don't, if we set an incentive to bet on the turn, then suddenly we will, and if we let the solver uh, to still adjust its strategies on the flop, what we will see is that the solver on the flop will see that it has incentives later in the tree 
and will try to do everything to get there. Mm. So he will like play already knowing that he will have this turn incentives, which is usually not what we want. I I do encourage you to play a little bit with that and and see that in experiences of our early testers, it's generally not a good idea to let solver adjust strategies on the flop if we do set incentives on the turn. Especially when we're talking about adjusting IP strategies or the OOP strategy on the tur on the flop, if we are adding incentives for OOP on the turn. And that's why we have this uh, big button here, lock all parents, which we're gonna use. And let's lock both players on the flop and in, in all lines. So here we get a list of which nodes will be affected. We click yes. And now we will resolve the tree and we will see how betting frequency on the on the turn will check and we can also see the resulting counter strategy and we see that on average in position player is calling 66 percent hands and raising six percent hands on on the turn and um, so now we will resolve from here okay we go back to the browser and now we have reached 55%. And after this small change, we do not see a huge change in the average uh, responses. So, so the exploit to this, to this small change is not that high. However, we do see an increase of 1% in, uh, in race. But let's add a bit more incentives to get, uh, sorry, not here. Here, let's add a bit more incentives to uh, to this node to achieve this maybe eight to achieve the sixty five percent average on the turn. Okay, we have sixty percent, so we need to pump this number a bit higher. Okay, so now we reached 62%. Okay, let's assume that it's fine and we can look at the at the response. So we do see that there is much more raising now. So it used to be 6%, now it's 8%. Um so so that's pretty much it. You can you can play a bit more with it, of course, and you can tweak it to um get the results uh, that you want, but this is the basic idea of uh, using the incentives feature. So navigate to the node you want, open the incentives, set incentives, and local parents. Um, at the moment, it's relatively crude. I really hope you guys to, to check it out, to experiment with it, and send us some feedback. And maybe we'll add more, uh, more features around it if there is a um, if there is a request for that. So uh, thanks and see you next time.